I think the beauty of being an athlete is that you're never satisfied with the type of player you are. <laughs> You know, checking your hair, just checking your... your, your <laughs> I don't check my hair. <laughs> I'm just an instinctual player. I just play what I see or play what I feel and I think it's always evolving. My mindset reflects my game. I think when I'm unhappy off the field, I don't really <laughs> find myself playing well on the field but I always get back up and go again, and that's who I am as a person. Sam Kerr scored them all! Just got to roll with the punches, and I think that's how I play. The Australia I love is pretty simple. <laughs> my family and friends is the first thing that comes to my mind. It's kind of hard to picture Australia without them. Growing up in the Kerr household was tough. You know, if you didn't play sport, you, <laughs> you got a lot of stick. And I think, I think that's what's made me so competitive now is my competitiveness growing up in the family. You know, my dad always had us playing games, whether it was in the hallway, out the back. Everything was competitive um, from the moment I can remember. What a cute kid she was, eh? When I just started walking, about eight, yeah. seven, eight months, she was a quick walker. She yeah, she was. Got to balance really yeah. easy. She had to keep up with the rest of the brothers yeah. and sisters. <laughs> We're pretty competitive people, and I think that's just the nature of sport and what you do, that you've got to be competitive. One of the great things I can always remember me and uh, Daniel and Sam, you know, in the backyard playing cricket. We love our cricket. We'd be there from seven in the morning to five, six o'clock in the night. And Dan and Sam are very, very competitive people. They want to win at everything, you know. So, which is good fun. Why are you so happy? A toy. All my family's been big role models for me. I always try and, you know, look up to them and be who they are as people, and I think that's really important to me. As a kid growing up, I didn't really know much about my Indian heritage, but now I'm very, like, proud of it. As I got older, it opened my eyes to being more, I guess, open to different walks of life. And I know it makes my Nana really proud that when I go out and play for Chelsea or play for Australia, that, you know, people are really proud in India to have an Indian playing in these teams. I suppose a lot of my values are passed on to Roger and then passed on to Samantha. She's got a very, very good work ethic. She's humble like me. Yeah, she's, she's just a gorgeous kid. But she's not a kid anymore, is she? She's a young lady, young woman. God. Kathy Freeman's the sporting moment that really changed how I thought about sport. And when I watched her run that race on home soil, like, I was only, you know, seven years old and I understood, like, Oh my God, like imagine being Kathy Freeman. Like she walked into that stadium and every single person was stopped to watch her. The whole world sat down and watched that race, you know, and Sam sat on that couch and, you know, watched and cheered on, jumped on the couch like a little kid and she recognized as a hero. But once it became Kathy Freeman and a woman, she sort of related that very, very easily and wanted to be an Olympian. What's that on there? This one? This was year six. That's when she started her playing footy. To play footy, yes. Yeah. Play Aussie rules, yes. Where I'm from, Perth, is a very AFL-dominated state. 
So for me, all I wanted to do was be an AFL player, just follow my dad, follow my brother. And I think my brother playing professionally, I always had that kind of idol within the household to want to be the best athlete I could be. Sam had her hair so short and everyone thought she was a boy. One of the coaches one day said, no, you've just got beaten by a girl and that was the end of the... Uh, oh, the boys started crying. Oh, the boys started crying. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. She's, a, she's a girl. Yeah. We didn't know that. <laughs> She played um, Aussie rules since she was 12, and then the girls weren't allowed to play with the boys. So Daniel and Dylan, her cousin, suggested that she go and try soccer. Alistair Edwards was a scout back in the day for the youth teams. He got a call saying, there's this young girl, you have to come watch her. She plays in the boys' team. You have to come see her, she's just a raw talent. So he came down and watched and he was like, where's the, where's the girl? And they were like, it's the one on the wing. <laughs> I had a boy haircut, I looked like a little boy. So then he started watching and then after the game he came up and he was like, Sam, we'd really like to invite you down to try out for the state team. And I had no intentions of playing football at the time. I was just playing for fun. So I was like, no, that's okay. Thank you though. And just walked off. He just looked at me as if to say like, Nobody's ever done that to me before. Everyone wants to try out for their state. But then when I went and saw her, she said, well, you know, I'm embarrassed, I'm shy. But she went down there and tried out, and obviously she got in. I tried every position on the field. I, I tried to play in goals, because that was the closest thing to AFL, but I was tiny and couldn't really <laughs> grasp it. The hardest part for me is I went from being a good little footy player and then I went to football and I couldn't control the ball to save my life. It did take a while. I think, you know, it sounds cheesy, but when you realise you're, you're good at something, you like it more. And I think once I'd got invited to a few Aussie camps, I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'm not even really training that hard and I'm still making the team. If I really put myself, you know, 100% into this, I could probably be really good at it. The first word that comes to mind is dynamic. That's the first thing that stood out to me about Sam. She just had a physical presence about her. And then there was also a fearlessness about her. It wouldn't matter where she played or who she played against. She was someone that had all the raw materials to be an outstanding international player, but she also had the temperament to do so. And that was obvious from a very young age. At 16, I think the Asian Cup was an amazing team thing. I look back at photos now and I wasn't taking myself as a player seriously. As a kid, you kind of play that role of just, you know, happy-go-lucky. You kind of play when you're played and do what you can for the team. And it was an amazing experience, but on a personal level, as a player, I still never really thought that this would be my career, this would be my pathway. And I was just like almost just happy to be there, not really like understanding the magnitude of what we'd just done. I remember Sam was telling me about this lady, Marta, you know. I'm um, there's this lady called Marta and she plays women's soccer. She's so good, you know. And I didn't know the first thing about soccer. So, you know, I remember and she's like, oh, the World Cup's going to be on, I'm going to try and watch it. And then the next minute she's in it. <laughs> Playing for your country, who would have thought? And um, when you look back now, you know, she was so young and so chubby and you know, a little fat face, and, and now she's like 10 years on and she's still there, so it's amazing. I had such a quick rise in the Matildas, went from 15 to scoring a few goals, playing at the Asian Cup. I think 2011 was probably <laughs> my worst year as, you know, uh, as a teenager. I think that was kind of when all my, you know, lack of fitness, lack of, like, training, all of that kind of spearheaded at that World Cup. But I was also a kid, so I didn't have much expectation. When she came into the team at first as a teenager, she was technically good, but a little bit raw and, and a little bit like a, a lot of young players, inconsistent and careless in a sense, you know, a bit of not taking real care with what they do. It is Sweden who go through. 
They won it by three goals to one against a plucky Australian side. When we got knocked out by Sweden, everyone was crying and I was like, well, this is, like, weird. I, I don't feel like crying. Like, should I fake cry? Like, I, <laughs> I felt like, oh, this is weird. I, maybe I don't care as much as them. But then, you know, after we got knocked out, I remember watching all the games. That's when I was like, oh, dang, I wish I was there. I wish that was us that was doing that. I think that few months was definitely the realisation of, OK, I actually want to play football and I actually really like football and it's hopefully going to be in my career. In 2014, I had a problem in my cartilage in my knee. I had microfracture surgery, which was quite a risky surgery. Yeah, that injury was really, really tough. I had to go live in Canberra for 10 weeks. I was non-weight wearing for 12 weeks. It was just a nightmare. The worst part about being injured is not the injury. It's about, yeah, getting taken away from your team, your teammates, all the fun things they do. When you're injured, you work harder, you work alone, and you miss out on travelling with your team, you know, the game days, experiencing all the highs and lows together. It's all kind of you know, alone and with the one physio and, yeah, it can get quite annoying, but um, that's life, I guess. I could never be an individual sport person. I think I thrive off the energy that the team has. And, yeah, I think that's why maybe I find it a little bit harder to be injured more than anyone else, cos I hate being alone. I'm not afraid to admit it, I hate being alone. I love being around people, I love making people laugh, um, you know, making the energy high. And if there's some laughing or joking or mucking around going on in the team, I'm normally right in the middle of it all. I'd done so much, so much work to get to Canada. I did 10 weeks of hard, intense rehab. When you're out for that long and you see other people doing well, you see the teams that you're meant to be a part of doing well, it makes you want to get back and want to be doing what you love. In the initial stages, she tended to play predominantly on the right wing, but I think she always had the qualities that were perfect for, you know, uh, what we call leading the line as a striker up front. My coach said to me, I want to play you as the nine. And at the start, I was like, oh, God, like, I can't imagine myself playing there. I'm always used to having the, the line to the back of me and, you know, using the, the line as your friend and just never really thought of myself as a central player. But after a few games, I quickly was like, oh, I could get used to this. She is actually very, very good in the air. If you look at her vertical jump and her ability in the air, you know, similar to another Australian great, Tim Cahill. The second thing is that she is actually quick and strong and aggressive with her running. She's not just someone that likes to play in front of a line and join players in. She's actually somebody that continues and always threatens the back line. I think the standout moment is when we beat Brazil. We'd always got knocked out in those games, so I think kind of just to break down that barrier of not getting knocked out in the first round was an amazing experience. That kind of pushed me to be like, no, I want to win this. but I never really believed that we could actually win it. And I think that hinders the way you can perform at a World Cup because you think, oh, like, this is a success just getting here. Awesome. Push it on the line and Japan will score! And Australia do fall out of the competition at the quarter-final stage. The Canada World Cup changed my mindset on what the Matildas can do, not just being kind of happy to be one of the teams to be there.
people were getting behind the Matildas more. I feel like, you know, Australians love successful teams. There's no denying that. We want to get behind teams that are winning. And, you know, when you kind of see in the media or the papers that the Matildas have gone through to the next round, people, you know, their ears prick up. The name Matilda is probably the most iconic football brand in Australia. And when you talk about the Matildas, you automatically talk about Sam Kerr. I think we have stolen the heart of Australia and Sam being in the Matildas, it's definitely raised the level for the profile that we have. You'd probably be speaking to fans and then Sam walks past and they're just not even talking to you anymore, so she definitely has that effect on everyone. Am I just being me? <laughs> she is the person that the media want to talk to. She is the person that leads the team. She is the face of the team. She's the face of Australian women's football. So the pressure on her there and the demands on her are considerably greater than they are at, at club level. Kerr, is she outside? Yes, she is. Kerr all alone with Branch. Sam Kerr tries to go around Branch and she puts it in. Spectacular from Sam Kerr. She's had that real proper journey going to America and having to play in a very, very competitive league there. And she excelled in that league. I always scored for my club team and I was always the striker that people would rely on. I was having a lot of success in the NWSL. I went on to win multiple golden boots there. Sam Kerr with another goal! But at the same time, I think I had something crazy, like nearly 50 games for the national team and only seven goals. So I just kind of spoke to the psychologist we had in camp and said, like, I don't know why, but I can never, ever perform for my national team. I can always do it at club land, but I don't want to just be this player that's good at their club and then not good for the national team. But then I scored a few goals in the Tournament of Nations. It was just about shifting my mindset to become that player at the national team. At the previous World Cups, I didn't feel like anyone knew who I was. And then jumped to this World Cup, and I think people were aware of me now being a goal scorer. That adds a little bit more pressure, obviously. I also got given the captaincy. I felt like I wasn't super ready for the role, but the coach at the time really wanted me to take it, and. I had the support of the girls to do it too, so it's been really enjoyable and something I'm really proud of. I think that I've definitely grown up being the captain. Every World Cup we've gone to, other than 2019, we had this underdog mentality, and I think Aussies thrive on that. But our first game against Italy, we weren't the underdog, we were the favourite. And it's saved. Kerr might get to the rebound. She does. It's still to this day the challenge of the Matildas. We can play really well against top teams, but against the lower ranked teams, it can be tough to get up for these games. It's been turned in. Australia punished. Italy celebrate. After that Italy game, although we lost, it just kind of settled the nerves. Just like get that out of the way. You just had to like realise everything in those 90 minutes and just kind of deal with the pressure, deal with everything that was thrown at us. Australia have beat Brazil after being two goals down. An amazing turnaround. I'm so proud of the girls. You know, there was a lot of critics talking about us, but we're back, so suck on that one. <laughs> Playing in a World Cup is the most important thing to me in football. It's the pinnacle of our sport. Good call that. Excellent header, 1 0. We're 10 2 0. As a number nine, you need to be an all rounder, be able to score with your head, foot, whatever it is, and she can do it all. So we know we just need to find her in the box, and it's going to be a goal. Sam Kerr has a hat-trick. Oh, 
it's in. It's 4-1 Australia, and Sam Kerr scored them all. She encapsulates the Australian spirit. She's a fierce competitor, but she actually always looks like she's enjoying herself when she plays. She's still very natural and very much herself. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. There was talks of people saying that they thought we could win that World Cup. Say hello, world! <laughs> there was a lot of expectations, and people from Australia, once they start supporting a team, they want their team to win and they want their team to perform, and if not, there's going to be a lot of talk about it. When there's a game and you feel like you need a goal, and I mean, all of us can feel that, and she can probably feel that the most, because she, I think, would expect that it has to come from her. And Sam Kerr does it again. The flag's up. It won't count. I always wonder in these games if she actually does feel that pressure because, again, she doesn't show it. And there goes the full-time whistle, so it will be a penalty shootout. Who is about to hold their nerve? She's the person that scores the goal. She's the person that wins some games. She's the person that leads them. So with that comes that responsibility. It's hard, and I think as me, it's just a disappointment because we got knocked out and a penalty shootout, and I missed one of them. And Norway are into the last eight of the Women's World Cup. It's heartbreak for Australia. I don't think about it now. I, don't, I, definitely, I, I definitely don't think about it. If anything, I make jokes about it um, because that's just how I deal with things. But it's also changed how I think about football and how I think about disappointments. And there was definitely low moments from the penalty, but I think every World Cup's been a learning curve and I think it's helped me mentally mature. I think living away from home for so long, it makes you grow up. Sam's been away from home for what? Oh, 11 10 years? years 10, 10, 11 years. 10 years. But like she said the other day, which I didn't realise, she was talking, doing an interview with somebody and she said, oh, you know, I went to America when I was 18 and it was so much fun and da 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 da. Mm. And then she looked back and went, oh my God, like I'm on the other side of the world and I thought it was just fun. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> I just think it's a great story. It's not like she's come from these great expectations of being a superstar at 15 and then achieve that, which happens with some sports. She's just continued to play football, continued to develop, and then just become this, you know, phenomenal player. She's Australia's top goal scorer of all time. Her ability to score goals at you know, international level, her ability to score goals in the NWSL, and then obviously she's gone to Chelsea, and she just continues to score goals. And that's a naturally gifted and talented athlete. People just go, I can't believe how quick she is, I can't believe how good she is. And that makes you proud, you know, that you hear sitting down talking to people that are running home to watch your daughter on TV on Channel 10 or something, you just go, oh, OK. I'm so proud of everything she does, really. It's, it's hard to pick anything. The Opera House was really amazing for me. She does some, some great things, my Samantha. People say, yeah, Sam Kerr, well, how good is she? <laughs> and, and she does it. And again, it's, both, it's her ability, but it's also her personality. She's a superstar who is at the peak of her career. She's actually an Australian sporting hero. The host country 
of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 will be Australia, New Zealand. I feel like we can have a Cathy Freeman moment. I feel like that's what we can do in 2023. We can have this moment where young girls and boys watch us and remember it forever. Everyone knows where they were when Cathy ran that race and hopefully everyone knows where we are in 2023 when we walk out. Sam's grown the game huge in Australia, not only for females, but for young boys and men as well. You see all types of ages wearing her jersey and her stepping onto the world stage and performing at that level has definitely pushed the game even further to where it is now. I always had a dream and always thought that I would be a professional athlete. I play football because I love it and I love hearing that people love watching me play and I hope I keep being who I am and scoring goals and entertaining people and making more and more people fall in love with the game and yeah, I just want to keep being myself and keep hopefully inspiring the next generation. Yeah, the practice gets worth it when the practice makes perfect, to make perfect, you gotta earn it, you gotta sacrifice and be assertive, to be the greatest, stay humble, stay focused, don't stumble, and you best be ready to rumble, come with the lion's heart in the jungle. No one I'm doing it right, and no one I'm doing it wrong, I know when I'm doing it better than anyone else on the scene when they're calling me Don, I know how to do this thing on a rap, know how to do this thing on a song, know how to put in the work and win in the race, and here is where I belong.